favoring Aswan because Aswan not not being looked at as a focal point for ancient Egyptian monuments and tombs. We know that there is some there is some temples there like Phi Lai Temple, there we have Elephantine Island, but but it doesn't receive the the focus or the attention as Luxor, as Giza, as Saqqara receive. So finding these tombs is opening a new door and giving hopes for more things to be discovered since Aswan was the gateway to Africa back at that time. So we are talking about 33 tombs has been discovered and I think that there should be still more waiting to be discovered in this area and especially that Aswan did not receive much attention. So the interesting thing about these tombs is dates back to the late period. When, for those who are not as uh, sp uh, specialized in history, the late Egyptian period dates back to around the 6th, 7th century BC, which is nearly 2,700 years ago, and extends to the 3rd century AD, which is a period of nearly uh, like uh, seven, 700 years. And, and in this period, there was a very interesting dynamics happening in Egypt. That is the period, the transaction or the transition period be between the, the ancient Egyptian civilizations and, and newcomers, Greeks and Romans, new cultures into, introduced to Egypt. And later on, at the end of this period, that was Christianity, which is introducing new culture and new lifestyle in Egypt. And uh, so in, in, in this period, the interesting fact is many of the newcomers, especially the Greeks, when they made it to Egypt, they thought that they will introduce their own culture to the Egyptians and they will kind of encourage and enforce the Egyptians to follow and a Greek Mediterranean culture. But this discovery is proving the opposite because the discovery is, is when you look at the mummies and the features of mummies, they are not Egyptian features, they are not Egyptian genetics. They are European, Greek, Roman genetics. And, but they practice the ancient Egyptian mummification. They have their bodies mummified like the ancient Egyptian style and uh, with the mummy mask, which is proving that the other thing which has happened that it was the Greeks and Romans who settled in Egypt at that time and in Aswan in particular, and talking about our actually uh, area today, they became Egyptianized. They followed the ancient Egyptian tradition and burials, which is which is mean that they follow the ancient Egyptian relation with its package, which is with its culture package. Well, uh, talking about the concept, uh, when we have a discovery, we find a real um, following and a real um, uh, talking about the coverage of uh, the media uh, that usually uh, the ministry is keen to show minute by minute uh, when you have new discovery that people starts to be a merry, uh, they feel the enthusiasm of uh, to, to know more information about uh, these discoverers and uh, more uh, will to come to find out more about the Egyptian antiquities by themselves? In, uh, it, the timing is very good, you know, for different reasons. You know, because uh, because we, are, uh, we are a couple of months from the beginning of the tourism season. And that is normally the time when, when he will arrange their, start planning for their holidays. And, and if this news is spread very well, not only in our local media, in the international media, uh, that will help people attracting their attention not only to Egypt, not only to Aswan, but to Egypt as well. Especially that with, especially that with the challenge we are facing now with the war happening in the region, but that should be compromised with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, marking, marking Egypt as a destination which is away from the conflicts which is happening in the Middle East now because unfortunately most of my actually guests uh, like customers or, or even friends and colleagues they don't have or the Western culture in general especially when, you can, when, it, when it comes to North America, England they don't have much uh, knowledge about the geography of the Middle East and they think that the conflicts which is happening now in Gaza that is affecting in, uh, in Aswan or the Nile Valley so promoting from, from Egypt from this perspective 
and introducing or highlighting the fact that we are not, security-wise, we are not that touched by the conflicts in the Middle East, that will help in increasing poking in the new season. Well, talking about um, uh, Aswan, of course, it's a beautiful city with many beautiful scenery. Whether I'm talking about its temples and monuments or the uh, Nile cruising over there, so how far can this also has its impact on attracting more uh, tourists to Aswan? Okay, so in. Um I'm really thankful for these comments because, because I think that from my perspective, as I will talk as a tour guide now, not as an Egyptologist, and also as, as a person which has family links in Aswan, I think that is Aswan uh, attractions not well promoted as it should be. I will give you an example. You know, we grow up in the tourist field since 2000, and, and, and we are always, as a tour guide, as a tour organizers, we, we look at the attractions in Aswan as limited, as, which is, can be covered only one day, uh, including uh, the unfinished obelisk, the high dam, the elephantine, uh, sorry, the Philae temple, and the Abu Simbel temple. So apart from that, there is not much things to visit in Aswan. That is, that's how we grow up with. But actually, I, I hope that the next period with this discovery, that will open the door for promoting other attractions, is, in my opinion, as an Egyptologist now, and as a tour organizer as well, is not less important than these sites. For example, uh, uh, Aswan Island, which is also known as Elephantine Island. Elephantine Island, that was, the, that was the oldest inhabited place in Aswan. And talking about Aswan in the ancient time, we are talking about uh, Elephantine Island. And the southern part of Elephantine Island has the most amazing, um, the most important archaeological site, not only in Egypt, all over the world. You know, in this site, you can tell the history of Egypt because it has monuments dates from the prehistory in the early dynastic period, old kingdom, middle kingdom, new kingdom, late period, even, even Christian, even Jewish temples there, and Islamic monuments, all that, and the modern time and the modern culture represented in the Nubian villages in this, in this island, and it is in the heart of Aswan. And from my personal experience is going there is less than 2% of people going to Philae Temple, for example, they will go to Elephantine. Even the logistics is much easier and closer. So, but, so using that as an example, so we need to promote for other attractions and we need to use uh, the new discovery to promote, uh, to promote for sites like this one. And what we need to do is a marketing campaign for sites like this one. I will mention other sites as well, in my, in my opinion, which is worth this thing. And doing some minimum infrastructure, like, like shading pla shaded places and shaded walk places, because this is the only complaint of tourists going there, and even the tour guides as well, is the lack of shade areas where people they go there. And you know that Aswan is extremely hot, most of, uh, very hot most of the year out. Other sites, like East Sohail Island, so East Sahel Island has one of the most uh, important quarry for granite, which is also has a, a house of some of the very important rock graffitis and rock art, uh, including the famous famine stealer in East Sahel Island, the Nubian Museum, which is extremely unique, not only in Aswan, in Egypt, all over, all over the world. You know, considering that, the, there is the only place in Egypt, in, sorry, the only place in the whole world now which is you can experience the Nubian culture and the Nubian history is in Aswan. The second and the only destination, the, the second only destination in Sudan, and Sudan with a political disorder that is it's possible for people to go visit there, which is mean that Aswan now has has an advantages for people who would like to explore the Nubian uh, the Nubian culture. Uh, there is a beautiful museum, a small but a beautiful museum, which is called the Nile Museum, and the Nile is the most important thing in when it comes to the ancient valley civilization, the Nile and the Nile Valley. And also, this museum also should receive some attention by by attracting or making a campaign to attract uh, tourists. Uh, add to that activities and uh, special water activities, kayaks and, uh, and, uh, and hot, hot air balloon, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not expert, you know, in aviation, 
to say that if Aswan is suitable for hot air balloon, balloon or no, but why not? Why not thinking of, of having a hot air balloon like the one in, uh, in Luxor in Aswan as well? I think that that will bring attention, you know, attraction, especially that the new trends of tourism now is not only history and monuments, it's also including activities and experiences. And when it comes to experiences, there is, there is, mm, there is much experiences, especially when it comes to the Nubian Islands, and villages around. Right, uh, Mr. Samir Abbas, a tourism expert and uh, Egyptologist, thank you very much for joining us. I guess with this we come to the end of our breakfast show for today. Thank you all for joining us and stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International.